Good morning. Good morning. Thank you to the city of Jacksonville for hosting this sacred memorial event every year. Thank you very much for the privilege of standing before you today on the 31st anniversary of the Beirut bombing and the liberation of Grenada. And thank you for allowing me to stand before those of you that have so bravely served our country and those of you that are currently serving our country. Most especially, thank you to those military families who have sacrificed at the expense of a loved one. I'm humbled to be here. Please know that fate has brought us together. Our hearts are forever intertwined in the shared love we feel for someone special on this memorial. My someone special is my only brother, U.S. Marine Sergeant Mikat Camera. My name is Elisa Maria Camera. I was 17 years old, a freshman at Queens College in Charlotte, North Carolina, when my college roommate came into our room and told me she kept seeing breaking news on TV about a bombing in Beirut at the Marine headquarters. She, along with everyone in that dorm, knew my brother was deployed there because I talked about him a lot. He was my hero at an early age. He was my big brother, my only brother, my protector, my ride to school in the mornings, my softball coach, my personal fishing instructor, my dating expert, and shoulder to cry on when I was heartbroken. It was obvious to many I adored him. I could not imagine he could be hurt or nonetheless killed. He would send me letters often from Beirut. Not one of them ever led me to believe that he was in danger. Looking back, he was making sure I would not worry about him. Well, it was only within a few hours after being glued to the TV with all of my friends by my side that I was uh, notified from home that Mikot was one of the first to be identified. Shortly after, two Marines came slowly walking to the sidewalk, down the sidewalk to my dorm. I knew they were there for me. I could not even look them in the eyes. I was running to my car screaming, I already know. I could not get back home to West Virginia quickly enough. My family put an APB out on me. <laughs> I drive a little fast anyway, but um, I was driving, crying, screaming, and praying that this had to be a mistake. I was pulled over by the Virginia police. The nice police officer saw me, heard me screaming, why, why? I'll never forget, he said, I do not know why, young lady. I do not understand this myself. I do know your family is very worried about you. You need to calm down. He had me follow him to the station. He gave me crackers and water. He comforted me the best he could. He escorted me to the Virginia, West Virginia line. As he turned away, he slowed down, rolled down his window, and he saluted. 31 years later, and I'm still asking why. Just recently, one of Mikot's Marine brothers shared some words of wisdom to answer my agonizing quest to understand why. Why did this happen? Here's his answer. There are some questions in life that have no answers, but we have to accept God's plan and live our lives for the service of others. Thanks, Alan Oprah. That's exactly what my brother Mikot would want for all of us here today to live our lives for the service of others. Isn't that the definition of a hero anyway? And Mikot was my hero. All those behind me are my heroes. And all of you in front of me are my heroes. The veterans, the surviving family members, and those actively serving today. A hero is defined as someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. My brother did just that. Each of them did just that. They willingly gave themselves to a cause greater than oneself. They served our country well. They were international peacekeepers and they were brutally killed serving in this capacity. They were peacekeepers 31 years ago, and our world is still struggling with this quest for world peace. 
If my brother could be here today, he would say to you, looking back, do not harbor anger or hatred to those who killed us. Instead, pity them and pray for them to learn peaceful ways of living and to value life. Looking back, do not harbor guilt for surviving that day if you were there. Rather, make each day of your life into an opportunity to make this world a better place for your children and your grandchildren. At this time, I would like to recognize Kevin Jiggets. Please stand up. He is a survivor in more ways than one. He was on the third floor at the time of the explosion. He was unburied from the rubble, pulled to safety, and rescued by his brother. He stands before us here today. Let him be an inspiration to all of us to continue to march forward in the pursuit of courage, honor, and commitment, the very essence of a United States Marine. Please let this wall with the name of our sacred brothers represent all of those that are serving our country past and present. My brother would want the world to know the sacrifice made by all military personnel defending our freedom and the sacrifice of their families. I was blessed that Mikot wrote to me often, but not only did he send me letters, he also sent letters to his friends, our priest, and one of our close neighbors named Roy Carter. Roy was kind enough to share one of those letters with me, and I'd like to share just a few paragraphs if you don't mind. And this is my brother's letter. Well, all is going just fine over here. Been here a little over a month and still have five to go. Of all the time in the Marine Corps, this has got to be my highlight. I've learned so very much my short time over here already that it takes more than war for someone to give up their freedom. The people of Lebanon are not quitters. I've seen buildings blow up at night and the men are out the next day rebuilding it. Children are the same as everywhere. They play stickball, hide and go seek. Every time one sees a Marine, a big smile comes across his or her face. They will always remember us. The greatest thing I've learned though is how very, very lucky we as Americans have it on this 4th of July, I would like to shout happy birthday, America, to all Americans. We should each and every one be thankful. I know I am. One of these days we'll get together to go fishing or hunting. I know we've said it a million times, yet when I get back, we'll do it one day. Tell the family I said hello for now. Your neighbor, Mikot, United States Marine Corps. That letter was written in July, only a few months before he died. It is obvious from this letter that Mikot loved children. He would send us letters asking us to send him balloons and candy so that he could give them to the children who frequently walk by the Marine headquarters. Ladies and gentlemen, there are children in other parts of the world today that are being taught at two and three years old to hate America. They are being taught to the point of being fanatical about it. I'm not saying that we need to be fanatical in America, but we do need to be passionate. Our children and our citizens in America need to learn to love America and the freedom that we are blessed with. We here today understand and comprehend the significance of our Marine Corps and our military. However, I do feel strongly that America as a country is losing sight of what our military is doing for us. And I want to make sure we don't forget the sacrifice that goes into freedom. And although our world is in turmoil right now, let them all see that our nation stands strong on faith and brotherly love. Let us bring back the passion. Let us bring back the patriotism. Enough with being complacent. October 23rd, 1983 is a date forever etched in my heart. My brother was sent to Beirut as a peacekeeper, and the Bible states, Blessed are the peacekeepers, for they shall be called the sons of God. If these men here behind me on this sacred memorial can inspire one person here today or any visitors in the future that will visit this place,
to become more patriotic, to shake the hand of a U.S. Marine, sailor, or soldier, and to say thank you? If these men here behind me on this sacred memorial can inspire one person here today or any visitors in the future to hug a war veteran and let them feel loved and appreciated, then I know my brother did not die in vain, but rather lives on in each of us here today and each of those that will come to visit this memorial. For the most part, everyone here understands the hurt and anguish that comes every October 23rd. My mission is just beginning. I want the rest of America to understand too. I continue to say it and it holds dear to my heart. I believe that sometimes all it takes is one person to inspire a nation. He may not be standing here today, but he was a proud U.S. Marine Sergeant. He was a son, he was a husband, he was a father, he was an uncle. He was the best big brother any little sister could ever dream of having. His name, United States Marine Corps Sergeant Mikat Camera. In closing, there's a picture that hangs at the Academy of Learning where I teach. On it are the words I feel epitomizes my brother. Success is the person who has lived well, laughed often, and loved much who has gained the respect of others, who leaves the world better than they found it, who has never lacked appreciation for others, who never fails to look for the best in others or give the best of themselves. My brother and his comrades, they gave their best. Thank you to each and every one of you here today for your dedication and to our country and our freedom. Lastly, as quoted by Robert Heinlein, a generation which ignores history has no past and no future. Again, I'm extremely humbled to stand before those of you that served our country and those of you serving our country today. And for those families with loved ones on the memorial, I too share in your loss. We love you. We love each of them. They will never, ever be forgotten. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be here today. Lastly, most important, thank you Hank, Joe, and Sam, my three sons. Mommy loves you. Thank you again for your time and Semper Fidelis. Thank you, Elisa.